Hello again, so this is structural analysis and design made fun and easy. This is part three of three parts of a, a three part video and structural concrete design of a beam to BS8110, a single span beam with a small cantilever. Um, if you haven't, please watch the video part one and two of how I, um, I did various things in those videos like I worked out the support reactions, I anal analysed the beam I got at the moment's envelope and the moment, hogging moment at B. I worked out the, the um, <clears throat> whether the section was suited, suitable to withstand the moment at the support where the, um, where the um, hogging bending moment was. Um, so that's all in video one and two. And two. Um, please like the video and subs subscribe to the channel. Um, and then uh, so basically, um, um, this is where I worked out where the bending moment is for the support B, 67.06 kilonewton meters. This is the bending moment envelope for the whole beam. Um, this is the reaction, support reactions. Um, this is where I calculated, yeah, this is where I checked the hogging moment for the beam at the support. And now we're on to the last part of the question, which is check whether compression steel is required to withstand the design span moment. Um, so basically this part is just, so we're looking at the middle of the beam. The beam's gonna, I've tried to draw the, the, um, the arrows where the bending moment to show how it works. It's basically gonna, it's gonna break it in tension at the bottom and crush it in compression at the top. Um, this is the idealized, this is how the stress uh, diagram would look. That's at the beginning, that's not the full stress capacity. This is just an idea of how the stress diagram starts to look when you put that moment into this, get compression on the top, tension on the bottom. Um, now we know this, um, oh, it's given in the question, there's only two bars at the bottom, two T20 at the bottom. I'm not sure if that, 216 from the support goes all the way through but um, so first of all um, I found out that the moment was 117 point 100 at that point the moment is 117 and so the compression stress at the top and the tension stress is at the bottom so the effect first thing to do is to find the effective depth at the middle so at the mid span the tension reinforcement is at the bottom as the bottom of the section is in tension therefore the effective depth of the steel tension reinforcement is d minus c minus link diameters minus t tension over 2 and tt is 20 millimeters this time so it's 350 350 minus 30 for the cover for the, to the link minus 10 for the link minus 20 over 2, that gives you 300. So then we just got to um, calculate our magic number of K. That's given by the magic formula, M divided by B D squared F C U. Um, if you haven't, um, you'll probably, you probably have found out that this is based entirely on the concrete section. So it's nothing to do with the reinforcement at the moment. We're just for trying to find the factor for, z for the lever arm based on the concrete strength and the section properties of the concrete. So it's 100, the M divided by BD sk sk squared FCU is 117.356 times 10 to the power of 6 divided by 300 times 300 squared times 30. That gives you 0 0.145. And luckily, that's less than 0 0.156, so therefore no compression, compression reinforcement is required. Although it's close to K, this K is 0.156. So um, that's so that basically is all you needed to do for the exam question. But just in case, let's just double check. Probably wouldn't have time to do this in the exam, but let's just double check it for the sake of the video. You can learn a bit more. So let's just final check. Find the Z, that's a lever arm, and the AS required. Uh, Z divided by D equals to 0 0.5 plus the square root of 0 0.25 minus K over 0 0.9. If you didn't know that already, this is the solution to a quadratic equation. And I've done um, a special, another video on concrete sections, single, singly reinforced, 
where I explain how the, how that how they arrive at this figure um, is all to do with the stress blocks and naught point the neutral axis and the stress compression stress over 0.9 of that depth. So um, when we've got so now I've got to put in k into the equation. I get not, z over d equals 0.5 plus 0.25 minus 0.145 divided by 0.9, which is all that again. 0.25 minus 0.161, 0.5 plus the square root of 0, 0.89 is 0.5 plus 0, 0.298 equals 0.798. So z over d is 0.798. That means that z is equal to 0.798 d, 0.798 times 300 equals to 239.5. Let's just call it 239 conservatively. Um, so basically then AS required is equal to another magic formula. AS required equals M divided by 0 0.95 times FY times Z. AS required is 117.356 times 10 to the power of 6 divided by 0 0.95 divided by 460 divided by 239. That gives you 1123 1, 1, 1.64. So A is provided 2t20, area of 1t20 is pi r squared, so that's 3.142 times 10, what, times 10 squared, 20 over 2 times, times 20 over 2, that's 314. So the AS provided is 2 times 314, 6, 28, so it's nowhere near enough. And it did look a bit small when you look at the K value. So the amount of rebar provided is not okay, but if we add another 2t20, then we'd have 4t20, then we'd have 4 times 314, it was 1256 millimetres squared, and that would be alright. So basically the section would work. So it's it doesn't need it definitely doesn't need a compression reinforcement. So that's that part of the question done. Then the la the next part is determine a suitable spacing for 10 millimetre high yield shear steel shear links to satisfy to safely withstand the maximum shear force that occurs in the beam, assuming a value of design concrete shear stress of 0.59 newtons per millimetre squared. So I've just redrawn the shear diagram that I'd already done. The shear envelope, I've got, I found out RA is 89.413, RB is 178.827. So basically it goes up the shear value. The shear is greatest at RB, so we need to check the shear value there. We need to check the shear stress at support B goes up 89 then UDL brings it down uniformly to RB and then back and then the reaction takes it back up here and then the UDL on this side is making that that value above the um, x-axis here is 33.53 times 2 which is 67.06 kilonewtons and so VA is RB equals 178.827 so the applied shear is basically um, just the V um, shear divided by the width of the section divided by D, which is the um, which is the effective depth. So before we've already calculated at the support the effective depth of 302. So the shear um, stress is 178.827 times 10 to the power of 3 divided by 300 times 302 which is 1.974 newtons per millimetre squared. So this is all pretty easy. Um, so then we just need another magic formula, a shear equation formula. The area of shear, this is from B8, taken from B81i. We need ASV, which is the shear, shear link area, is BV times SV times VA minus VC divided by 0.5 VY F FYV notation SV is the spacing of the links which is to be determined BV the width of the section that's 300 in this case ASV is the oh it says T T10 links are provided two legs per bar so the the shear area is two times um, Oh yeah, the area of one leg of a T10 link is 
just pi r squared r is equal to 10 over 2 so pi r squared is 3.142 times 25 that's 78.539 so 2 times that because you've got um, one, one vertical leg on each side of the beam so it's that, that gives you that number down there <coughs> 157.08 um, obviously, oh yeah, in here I've, I've done this calculation manually, but it's better to have the tables of bar sizes turned in the practice in the office. I think you can use the tables in the exams, which I've provided. So that means that um, uh, um, now we can plug those values into the, the shear equation here to get the um, to get the value for the spacing um, oh yeah it's given in the question that the shear shear stress capacity of the concrete is 0.59 newtons per millimeter squared usually you would have to look that up using the tables based on um, the effective depth and the uh, um, or the strength of the concrete and the um, 100 AS value but I'll do that in another video um, so in this case it's given so you don't need to worry about it so I don't need to worry about looking it up but, but I'll do that in another video yeah ASV is BV SV VA minus VC so I've just I put that's the shear equation the, this is the shear equation filled in with all the R values save for SV which is what we're trying to find out so 2 times 78.54 is equal to 300 times SV times 1.974 minus 0.59 divided by 0 0.95 times 460 so when I work that out I get 157.070 it's 300 times 1.384 divided by 437 SV that's equal to 0 0.9 SV so SV is equal to 157.08 divided by 0 0.95 is 165.34 millimeters so that's the minimum spacing so it's not unusual to have bars that are quite close so you know typically you could be looking at spacing of 300 in the mid span of the beam where the shear is lower and then um, here we need them 165 min so just make that a round number it's going to be 150 millimeters so I provide t10 links 150 millimeter centers so that's the answer to that one basically um, that's the end of this series of videos I've solved the ho I've solved the whole question and the whole question if you want to see if not already please watch video one and two of this three part series again and um, please like the videos and don't forget to subscribe for more content like this I can keep on doing more videos if I get more if I get some subscribers and likes um, thanks for watching <laughs>